Hello, welcome to another video in our series on OpenCPN. In this video, I'm going to be highlighting five of my favorite plugins that can transform OpenCPN into a full chart plotter alternative with some extra features you can't find anywhere else. My name is David from Out Chasing Stars, and I'd like to invite you to sit back, relax, and let's talk boats. In OpenCPN, a plugin is an additional piece of software that adds extra features beyond the standard functionality of the program. These plugins are designed to be easily installed, and there is a large library available, created both by the OpenCPN development team as well as third party developers. We're going to use these plugins to really customize OpenCPN. But before we do that, I'm going to pause for another word from the most handsome and humble sponsor we could ever hope to have. If you own a boat, you know just how much maintenance it takes to keep her on the water. Figuring out what you're supposed to be doing and how often you're supposed to be maintaining it is something that I really struggled with when we first got Starry Horizons. That's why my brother Thomas and I have teamed up to develop Maintenance Right On Schedule. This is a built from the ground up solution to help you identify and track all the maintenance tasks for your boat. You can search through our marine equipment database or even build your own maintenance schedule. We'll customize the schedule for your whole boat and alert you when it's time to get to work. This is something we have put our heart and soul into, and I am so happy to share it with you guys first. You can go to maintenanceros.com to start a free 14-day trial, no credit card needed. And as an additional thank you to all of our viewers, I'm going to offer you a limited time discount. When you sign up, Use the code OUTCHASINGSTARS to get 20% off for six months if you decide to continue after your trial. We all know maintenance is such a critical part of boat ownership. Let us make that part easier so you can spend more time enjoying the water. My brother and I have been so excited by the response to Maintenance ROS so far. We created it for fellow boaters and I want to make it as useful as possible. So if you get a chance to check it out, please let me know what you think. Now. Let's get back to OpenCPN and start off by showing you the easiest way to install a new plugin. We'll come over to the Options menu and then the Plugins tab. And when you first download OpenCPN, you should have quite a few plugins already listed, but it is a good idea to come down and choose to update the plugin catalog. That'll make sure you're looking at the most current version of all the plugins. Now the catalog update is successful, so I'm going to hit OK. Now, for the sake of time in this video, I've already installed a lot of the plugins we're going to be talking about today, but we'll install at least one so you can see how it's done. I'm going to scroll down a bit and find the calculator plugin. Now, you'll notice that it's grayed out, which means that it's not installed. It's also the box icon, which is another clue. And to just further illustrate how many plugins are available, I'm going to keep on scrolling down, scrolling down. There are lots of options available, including there's even one for radar. Now, unfortunately, our Raymarine radar isn't compatible yet, so we won't be talking about that today. But let's come back up and continue talking about the calculator. There it is. I'm going to go ahead and click on the name, and when the box pops up, we'll go ahead and select install. See, I told you that was it's pretty easy. We're going to go ahead and click OK and then we'll return back to the plugins page. Now we can now see that we've got an icon, it's no longer grayed out, and by default it is enabled. So if we click on it now, we're going to have uh, some options pop up. We've got a website link that will take us to a place where we can go see a bit more additional help topics. There is a button to modify our preferences. Now I'll take a quick look at that. I'm not going to mess with too many here, but just to give you an idea of some of the things you might be able to do here in this Options Preferences button. Now, if you want to reinstall the plugin, say if there's a new update that's been released, or if you want to uninstall it, you can do that from here. For now, I'm going to come back into our main OpenCPN page, and on the left hand side, we should see a new icon for the calculator. Now, this main plugin screen isn't like most calculators I've used, 
but you can still do some pretty simple calculations here in the box in the upper right hand corner. Uh, put in your equation. Uh, there's no need to put an equal sign. You can just hit enter or hit calculate and sure enough it'll do the simple equations and it'll save the history for you. Now that's helpful but it's not why it's one of my favorite plugins. If we come over here to the functions button we'll get a new pop-up screen with something a little bit more interesting. Now the developers have built in all kinds of functions and calculations useful for boating life. Want to know your hull speed or even what a hull speed is? You can get the definition here and input the appropriate parameters. Now Strike Horizons has a 44 foot length of water line, not 55, 44. Now I do want to make sure that I am using the appropriate units, so that's going to be feet, and I would like to see our hull speed, the calculation, in knots. So we've got those selected, we'll come down, we'll hit calculate, and we can see that the theoretical hull speed is almost nine knots for Starry Horizons. Now, there are all kinds of functions you can choose from. Uh, you've got drop down menus up here. You can come down and choose conversions. Uh, yeah. Now, this is a little bit of a quirk of some open source software. Uh, you may need to resize the window to be able to see everything again, uh, but we can do that. So, let's go ahead and convert a quick distance. Say we know Starry Horizons is still 44 feet. Uh, we're going to want to make sure we get our units right. And if we want to calculate what that is going to be in meters, say if we're trying to uh, fill in a clearing documents that requires that in meters, we can get our units correct. We can hit calculate, and there we go. Starry Horizons is 13.4 meters. So that's pretty nice. I definitely recommend that you take some time to look through all these available calculations. Uh, there are quite a lot of them, and I'm, I'm sure there's going to be something in there that'll be helpful for you. Now let's go ahead, we're going to close back out of here and move on to the next plugin, the dashboard. In order to get full use out of the dashboard plugin, you are going to need to have NMEA data coming into OpenCPN. That's why I dedicated our last video to showing how I do this using Wi-Fi from my Vesper Marine AIS. There are lots of other ways to do this, including like a physical connection into your NMEA network, but you will need something. So let's go back into our options menu, come over to the plugins tab, and we're gonna go ahead and find the dashboard. Click on the box and we'll select preferences because that's how we choose to modify this dashboard plugin. Now one of the really cool things about this plugin is that you can create multiple dashboards. You can create one with all the information you want when you're out sailing and another for when you're at anchor. Now, the one that's in here, that's kind of my default dashboard, but let's create a brand new one. You come down here and hit this green plus button. Pops up second one, we gotta come over here and click on it. Now, if we want this dashboard to show up in our main OpenCPN page, we're gonna have to make sure that this show this dashboard option is marked. We can give it a name. Let's, let's go ahead and call it a test. And you can select your orientation, whether you want it vertical or horizontal. If you really want to customize everything, come on over to the Appearance tab. Lots of fun stuff to play with. I'm going to leave that is as is for now and come back over to our dashboard options. In order to add all the instruments in this big blank box, well, once you click Add, we get a nice list of instruments we can choose from. Now I know all the way at the bottom down here, position, that's always a good one to know. So hit OK and add that. Let's add a few more. Come back in. Speed over ground. All the way at the bottom as well. Also good. Now if you're a sailboat like we are, there's another one in here. Ah, the apparent and true wind angle. Definitely helpful. So let's add that as well. We're starting to get the start of a good list and you can keep expanding that. Now if you didn't get the instruments in the order that you want, don't worry. You can change their position using this up and down buttons over here on the right. So there's a lot of options for customizing, but just remember there's only so much room on the screen, so you may have to pick and choose which instruments you want or have multiple dashboards. I think that's going to be good for now, so we'll hit OK, exit out of the options menu, and come back to our OpenCPN page. 
and we have now got a dashboard called test. I'll move it over to the side and if you have more instruments than you can view, you can come down here, pull down the window and see all of your instruments. Now I hope that you actually realize just how powerful this is, being able to have all the information from NMEA data at your fingertips is what makes OpenCPN move from just a planning tool to chart plotter territory. It's really impressive, and honestly, I can't believe it's free. The next plugin we're going to cover is called the Voyage Data Recorder. And just like it sounds, this is a really easy way to capture all the NMEA data that comes into OpenCPN. We'll go back into the Options menu, Plugins tab, and we'll find, uh, down just a little bit, the VDR. Again, I've already got this installed, so we're just going to make sure that it's enabled, and then we'll come back to our chart page. Now this plugin actually adds two icons over on the left-hand side menu. We've got one for recording and another for viewing the data that we record. So let's go ahead and start out by recording some data. Now I cannot remember exactly, but I'm pretty sure that the plugin creates a default folder. Uh, this is not it. I'm pretty sure it's called this VDR folder uh, where you wants to save that VDR file. You can select a different folder, just remember where it's located. Now I would recommend that the you keep the file name as vdr.txt and I'll touch on why when we go to review the data. I'm going to go ahead and hit save to start the recording and now the icon has a nice red record button look to it. We could keep this going for a whole passage, but since this is just a demonstration, I'm going to stop the recording already. Now, just for fun, let's go to the folder where I have, in the finder, there we go, where I have saved the VDR file, and we're going to take a quick look. Now, it's just a, a text file, so you can open it up and look at it, and it is pretty amazing how much data is generated in such a short period of time. Now, uh, it's not much I can use from this, so we're going to go ahead and close it and come back into OpenCPN so that we can test out that VDR view data function. Now, I would recommend that you actually turn off your NMEA connection for this part, where your saved data and your live data may try to fight each other for the numbers that you see on screen. So we'll come back to the options menu, connections, and we're going to disable my network connection. I'm going to hit OK, and we should see that my ships icon is going to turn black. There we go. The GPS connection is red, so we're good to go. Now on the left hand side menu, I'll select the VDR play icon, and this time we're going to use a sample vdr.txt file that will have some more interesting data saved. And this is where things get a bit finicky. If you try to select a file not named VDR, even if it has VDR data in it, it may not play back properly. So I would recommend if you're recording to save the name using the VDR name so that it'll play back properly. If you want to keep multiple recordings, then you can move the VDR file and then rename it. Then if you want to watch it again in the future, move it back and rename it to VDR. Now, um, it is asking for a VDR and it has no file extension. The file I have in here is a text file, which is what it saves. So I'm going to make sure that my extension is matching what is listed here in the folder. And you will also notice that even though we're opening a file, at least on my Mac, down here, it's still showing save. I promise this is the proper button. Uh, now, if we click it, we are going to get a warning that the file already exists and I'm going to be overwriting it. Again, this is one of the drawbacks sometimes of open source software. It may not be quite as polished as we'd like, but I think the features are still more than worth it and the workarounds aren't too onerous. Now, in this case, I most definitely am not overwriting the file, so I can still select replace. Now, my dashboard is going to start showing all the NMEA data from this voyage. And if I come up to this navigate menu, I can select auto follow to view the track. 
We also have this pop-up here, which will allow us to play with the speed of the playback, and we can see how far along in the progress of the recording we are. It's pretty cool to be able to watch this back, um, be able to see what you actually did on passage. If there's AIS targets around, it should be able to capture that as well. So for now, we're gonna go ahead and stop the playback, and we'll come back to the Bahamas. Not only is being able to look back at the data from passages pretty fascinating, but having that data lets us create custom polars for our boat using the aptly named Polars plugin. I'll show you what it looks like. Again, we're coming back into the options menu. We'll come over to the plugins tab, come down to Polar, and make sure we've got it enabled. And just like before, hit OK, come back to the OpenCPN chart, and now over on the left-hand side, we've got the icon for the Polars plugin. There are a few different mode options that we can select up here at the top. You can do everything in full manual mode if you already have a Polar for your boat that you're happy with. I have found, however, that official manufacturer Polars are somewhat optimistic given real-world conditions. So that's why it's so exciting to be able to create your own. Now, there are two good options to be able to do so. While you are out sailing, you can come and select this data from NMEA option. That'll generate a polar file from the NMEA data while you're sailing. Now, you can go ahead and select that. When you're ready, you hit record start, and it'll actually create the polar while you're out sailing. It's kind of fun to watch it fill in while you're on the water. Now, since we're anchored right now, I'm going to select the data from VDR file mode and select another VDR sample for this purpose. This one is in this folder, sample, sample polar data. Now, this plugin doesn't seem quite as sensitive to file names, so this time it's okay to have something not named VDR. I'm gonna go ahead and open up this file, and we can watch as the polar is built out from the NMEA data. Now, this can take a little while, so I'll jump ahead to the end. Now that we've got our full data set, let's quickly touch on what we're seeing. As you can probably guess, these straight lines, that's gonna be the wind angles, which will match the rows over here on the right. Now the colored dots, that's gonna to correspond to the various wind speeds, and that's gonna be the columns over here. Now each wind angle and wind speed data point is plotted along the rings, which graphically represents boat speed. Now it looks like our sample boat sails generally between hmm, five and seven knots, which matches up with the data over here in the cells on the right. Now we can use this data in so many different ways. There are racing oriented plugins in OpenCPN, or you can even create a custom polar for your boat in Predict Wind to try and improve passage planning predictions. Or it's just really cool to know. Now, lastly, do make sure that you save your polar diagram. You have got a few different file choices depending on where you're trying to save and use it. Now, I'm just gonna keep everything the default and hit save. Now, we can clear out the data if we want, close out, and move on to our last plugin. To wrap things up, we're gonna talk about the Grib Viewer. There are quite a lot of ways to view weather these days, and even though we do use Predict Wind while we're on passage, I still find myself using OpenCPN's Grid Viewer quite regularly. It's just really nice to have weather information essentially overlaid on a chart plotter setting. So let's show you how to use the plugin, or at least find it, uh, back in the options menu. You should really be sensing a theme by this point. Uh, plugins, and this one is pretty obvious. Grib. Now it is enabled, so we will come back to the chart page, come over to the left-hand side menu, hit the icon, open it up. If you don't already have a Grib preloaded, which I did as I was practicing for this video, uh, you're going to need to start out by opening a Grib file. Now you can actually use this plugin to create and send a request for a free Grib file using this at icon over here on the right. Now I'm not going to cover how to do that in this video, but let me know in the comments down below if you'd like me to make a shorter video covering that topic. I'm going to cancel out of here, and since I already have a grib file opened up, I'll at least show you where I got it from. Uh, we can use this open icon, and 
this is where I have generally a selection of them saved. The GFS is always a pretty standard one, so that's what we're going to go ahead and use for this tutorial. Now the default view is going to be these barbed arrows. And as we mouse around, we can see all this data up here is going to be changing based on the location. Now I can toggle the various layers of vector data and get some pretty cool graphics. Uh, I want to see where the rainfall is going to be, uh, the cape information, maybe some wind gusts, cloud cover, yeah, all there and pretty cool graphic format. Now you can manually cycle through these forecast times. Uh, this forecast is one that took place in the past, so I'll have to cycle backwards take out that cloud cover data so we can just see the wind information so we can cycle backwards through there or if you would like there is actually a playthrough option over here on the right hand side that'll run through all of the data kind of a cool way just to see it all in motion now there are quite a few settings we can play with so let's let's play around with those just a bit using this gear icon now, depending on your zoom level, uh, the barbed arrows may be super far apart, but you can adjust them using this spacing option right here. Arrow down, and if we hit apply, you should notice the barbed arrows get a lot closer together. Now, one other one that I think is particularly cool, let me increase the spacing in so this is a little more visible. When we're here in our data display options for our wind, I think this particle map looks really neat. If you go ahead and hit apply, uh, it's probably a little tough to see on the monitor. Let me get this out of the way. You can see some of the, just the, the lines, kind of giving a neat visual representation for the wind. Let's see if we get a good, yeah, that's starting to show it around this, uh, this low pressure system here in the forecast. You can really see some of those winds moving around there. So that's really kind of cool. Now, back into the settings, there are quite a lot of other options to play with, including all the other types of information that come in the grip file. You can use this drop-down menu, you can play with all of that. But I'm going to leave you to have fun with those things. That's going to wrap up the list of my five favorite plugins for OpenCPN. I hope you found this helpful and that these plugins will generally take your use of OpenCPN to that next level. Those of you with sharp eyes probably have noticed that there is a plugin that I have installed but didn't touch on, and that's the chart downloader. And that's because I covered it way back in our first video on OpenCPN. So I would suggest you go check that video out to refresh yourself, because the next topic we're going to explore is a deeper dive into charts, including how you can make your own. So thanks so much for watching. I will see you another day, another bay. Bye, y'all.